Hey y'all, this is AL Thick Madame and Cinnamon Sugar, and I'm at the car wash. So I was trying to get myself together. I had to remember I had on a particular type of shirt today. I was like, dang, I can't drive in, remove this sticker to conceal my employer's identity at the same time. So let me go on ahead and just wait till I get here. So I had to wait a minute anyway. My buddy here. Y'all know it's one person in particular I live for. That's here, so it is what it is. But anyway, y'all, um, I had an amazing day at work today. I'm so glad because for the rest of this week, unless they change it, I'm going to be in the new department. Now, tomorrow, I'm not going to have to worry about the side heifer because she doesn't work on Sundays unless they make it mandatory for her to work or she volunteers to work. Neither have happened um, for quite some time. Uh, or at least as of late, so I don't have to worry about that. Monday, they have it where I'm going to be working in the new department with her, her partner, and the guy who she can't stand. So that's going to be interesting. But what's crazy is tomorrow they have my name up there like I'm a regular over there. But Monday they got me up there with training next to my name. I'm like, oh. Y'all must be desperate for bodies. So y'all just gonna throw me over there to the wolves. No, but it's okay. But what's funny is that was my thought process a little bit, like kind of joking, but kind of serious. But the person who's like, you might as well say like a supervisor over there. He caught me when I was walking in my car. He was like, are you over there with us tomorrow? Knowing good and well, he know. Like this man lived for me. He done figured out what my name is. Cause he done rolled up on people and asked what my name was. All of that. So, you know I'm over there. You saw my name over there. You know what it's hitting for. So, anyway, he was like, are you over there with us tomorrow? I'm like, I had to think about it. Like, for real, because I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, I think I'm over there with y'all for the rest of the week. So, he was like, oh, well, um, the uh, department is going to um, be, it's not going to be operational for like 12 hours starting tonight. And so they they have like a random shift, like I think they do from eight to eight right now. At one point in time, they were doing four a.m. to four p.m. and the people who were behind them were doing four p.m. to four a.m. It was like, I, but I think right now everybody who's working that are pulling twelves, um, that actually are over there, they are doing eight p.m. to eight a.m. I don't know. Anyway, so he just was like, oh well, tonight. It's not going to be operational. They're going to shut it down. So tomorrow, it's not coming back up until in the morning at 8. So I was like, oh, so I'm going to be helping with setup then. And he was like, yeah. Like he was kind of, you know, like happy that I understood that without him even having to explain it. I was like, oh, well, you know, I've never had to do that before. So I'll get a chance to see how that goes. Now, the only thing after that that I'll have to learn, which is how the process goes if I'm there and they just so happen to shut it all down. I don't know how that goes yet. So it is what it is. Hopefully I'll have a great day tomorrow. I think it's going to be a bunch of boringness and then I'm going to have to go upstairs um, from time to time to kind of help out, which I don't mind doing. So anyway, let me get into a little bit of meat and potatoes. So I was given some paperwork today that has um, my new schedule on it. It basically says, this is your current schedule, like your current days, and these are the days you're going to. So the last day of me working my normal schedule is the 4th. And then on the 6th, I'm going to be off that Monday, I think for the holiday. And then I'm gonna come back in and I'm pretty much gonna work my schedule and <laughs> I don't know I don't even know how to feel I'm gonna be working Tuesdays through Saturdays starting what next week so wait a minute yeah hold on what's today what's today's date yeah well yeah no see I'm thinking of it because I'm like no today's not Sunday so as of Sunday when Sunday gets here That'll be the next week because we work from Sunday on. The new week is a Sunday um, at my job. Now, the other places, the new week starts on a Monday or on a Saturday. Like, it's random. It's, it's crazy depending on where you work. So, yeah, um, my new week starts on the 6th. I'm trying to be excited for it. 
Um, but it's going to be interesting because essentially I'm going to have less days where if I do get my days off, which I, I, I know I'm going to get them in most cases. So I'm not really worried about that, but is that her? No, that ain't her. Um, I'm going to see the side half of more, even if we aren't in the same department or working across from one another, we're going to be in the building crossing paths because of you know, our, um, <clears throat> our breaks. If she keeps her same break times, then we're going to see each other. She's going to be coming back from break. I'm going to be going to my break. When she going to lunch, I'm going to be going to, well, she coming back from lunch. I'm going to be going to lunch and I'm like, okay, whatever. Cool. Do what you do. So anyway, um, speaking of y'all saw the video yesterday, y'all, if y'all caught the end, y'all, <laughs> If you wanted to be nosy, you might have stopped it a couple of times to see what was going on and see what people look like to the best of your ability. Do what you do. I, it ain't nothing to look at. That's all I'm going to say, especially the side helper. But um, he was there. I don't know if he was just there for four hours or if he just left straight out at eight, but it had to have been like four. Because unless he asked somebody if he could work, I think his work schedule is like during the a regular work week. Like for most common people which are like monday through friday um <clears throat> but with him i don't know how his department as far as what he does how they do that he might work a couple of days between monday and friday where he is pulling 12 hour shifts and then he's supposed to be off but if somebody called out and he wanted to you know take that spot he can like i don't know what it is because they like I know y'all probably like, girl, why are you rambling? It like it's it's confusing and it almost be about to confuse me. Like, there's a woman who I was talking to today. I know that her schedule consists of like three twelves and like an eight hour shift or something like that. Like it's just random. Like some people work four ten hour shifts, which we all should do Monday through Thursday and go down but y'all they don't want to listen to logic like i promise you if every single shift did that and we were all off for three days they would see how much of a turnaround they would have an amazing turnaround but they ain't gonna do that anyway hopefully y'all can hear me i think yesterday um <clears throat> it was going out in and out because it was kind of covering um the mic and i apologize for that i had no idea because i I actually have paid attention to that before and hadn't had any issues. But yesterday, I just slung it in there. I ain't gonna lie, I just slung it in there today. So hopefully, it's okay. But anyway, yeah, y'all. I, I I don't know how to feel because, like right now, the way my schedule is, Friday, that's the first day that I have to see the heifer if she at work. So Saturday and Sunday, I don't see her. Then... Mondays she come back but most of the time they have her in the new department so I don't really see her but now since they've been training me now I have to see her more often and then like that's gonna leave room space opportunity and all this other foolishness for days when other people ain't there they like oh we could pull her like I don't want no parts of it so I'm just like somebody please somebody please do something um, this is going to be the first time <laughs> uh, since Juneteenth that I'm going to be able to have a holiday off. So I'm glad for it because I actually celebrate Juneteenth. As I've already mentioned before, I've been celebrating Juneteenth for like 20, at least 20 years. Like, don't, like, I didn't, a lot of people found out about it in 2020. I have legit been celebrating this since I was in college. My friend that is the male version of me, he is very, very all things Africa, live for everything about it. Like, I found out about it because of him and some other stuff that had been going on, but we weren't even celebrating, which you would think that at Alabama State University, even though we aren't in Texas, you would think that they would have, you know, had something about it. I ain't had no classes, even though we had like African related courses, wasn't nobody wasn't nobody talking about Juneteenth. Wasn't nobody talking about it. I didn't hear about it until he told me about it. And so I was like, okay. Looked into it. We actually had a couple of celebrations and everything. This was 20 years ago. So 
the fact that not much has changed is really sad as far as the celebrations go and i don't even think it has anything to do with when covid and all that stuff happened because there are places like texas of course that they have a lot of them but i feel like a lot of major cities don't do it or at least they weren't doing anything worth mentioning if anything at all prior to covid anyway y'all let me get off that so um i don't know what the situation is with him but i'm just saying that with my schedule i'm gonna have one day off i'm i'm not even gonna complain i'm gonna have one day off which essentially is not fair because i'm i was supposed to have three days off i was supposed to have monday off go back into work then be off wednesday and thursday and then come back friday but i was trying to figure out how they were gonna do it anyway as far as you know switching it over to the new schedule so i was just lucky that the way they did it i'm gonna be off for that day and then i'm gonna come in so whatever it is what it is so i know some people who never got a break in between so at least i'm gonna have that day off i'm not gonna do anything at all pretty much to my knowledge unless my friend has something i don't know what i'm gonna do but i don't really plan on doing anything so anyway y'all um so now uh some of y'all might want to go on ahead and, and head out <laughs> y'all might want to go ahead and head out i'm just being honest with you i don't want to subject you to something i want to go ahead and give you a, a warning first so yesterday was supposed to be like somewhat of a version of freaky friday so to speak where it was going to be some somewhat intimate details discussed but other stuff was going on. So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we have reached that portion of the video. So, if you are going to be offended by anything you think I might say, you might want to go ahead and head out. <laughs> um, but before I even get to that part, um, on a serious note, I have a friend who I've been friends with for the last 20 years. And I met him when I was attending Alabama State University. He literally lived across the street from the school. Like, if I wanted to walk, oh child, if I wanted to walk, I would have been able to just walk straight off the campus and go to his house. Anyway, um, I had a boyfriend, the guy who I told y'all about, for those of y'all who like remember I told y'all that, you know, Love and Marriage Huntsville, one of the reasons why I was kind of intrigued by the show was the fact that I knew somebody slash dated somebody who was from there and had visited the city before. Yeah. So that was the ex, the one that's in Huntsville, who is from Huntsville, and he does still live there. So uh, that was the person that I was dating at the time. Well, um, since I wasn't cheating on nobody, and I don't believe in cheating on nobody. You know what I'm saying? I just, I'm the type of person, I feel like if you have friends, no matter what your sexual orientation is, you should be able to have platonic friendships. And nobody should have to worry about, oh, are you going to be out here fighting and fighting and all that other stuff? So, yeah, that's why for me, I don't believe that um, the divorced man and I will be able to. That's one of the many reasons why I don't feel like he and I will be able to mesh because he over here worrying about something that ain't got nothing to do with him. It's like, sir, I can have male friends and not do nothing. Like, I don't understand why you thought that that wasn't something that could happen. But yeah, um, <clears throat> that's another story for another day. But with this guy, he um, is someone who he's always been there for me, always. But the problem with that is that he lives for me. He's always wanted me. And I'm looking at him like, sir, I don't have the slightest bit of an interest in you like that. You might be cool as a regular friend to have, but I don't look at you like that. Like I never, when we first met, none of that, I, I ain't look at him like that. It just wasn't anything about him that just you know attracted me to him at all like i'm not attracted to him at all it is what it is we were just friends so anyway that doesn't stop me from loving my friends and i do i love all of my real friends so yeah he never stopped living living for me um he has professed 
his love and all this stuff for me, child. It was so bad that he he knows where I live or whatever, like where my folks live, right? Now, when we were friends, whenever I was in between friendships, I mean not friendships, relationships, what I meant to say, in between relationships and all of that, it's cool, it is what it is, right? But it's just a situation where he would be like, oh, well, uh-uh, y'all, let me pause this because this heifer might try to hit me. Hold on. Okay, y'all, so um, I don't know who that was. The heifer was doing the absolute most, and I don't have time. So uh, I done parked and everything. Child, so with this person, like, I understand he lived for me and all of that. Like, he he, he took it to a, a, a point where he was just like, I'm trying to show you whatever, whatever. And I'm like, I hear you. I understand. Like, I, I really, I understood 100% that this man lived for me, wanted me, all of this. Like, I knew that if he could, he would move mountains for me. I understand that. But I am not the slightest bit interested. In, what in the world? I'm not the slightest bit interested in him. So in my mind, I'm just like, I mean, you can't make me want to be with you just because you're a good dude. I understand that you're a good dude. I appreciate the fact that you you a good dude. You seem to be, you know, how you need to be in relationships and all that stuff right there. It's just he he was older, a little bit older and all that stuff and I'm like, okay, that that wasn't a problem for me. It's just he is he just wasn't my like he was not my type like at all. Like I would look at him and nothing about him would maybe like, "Ooh, yes, I'm just so Oh, wait a minute. Let me think about this. I might need to mull this over like that. I mean, the looks, it was just, no, I don't know. It just, there was no attraction there for me on my end. So he always felt some type of way about that. And so then he would call himself ugly and all this other. I'm like, I ain't got time for it. It's too much. So it, it was a lot. Um, at one point in time, I did feel like, well, maybe I should try to give him a chance but then I was like, oh, I don't know about all that. Like, like I really sat there and I thought about it. I was like, well, maybe, maybe that's what I'm supposed to do. And I'm like, no, I shouldn't have to sit up there and basically like tell myself to do something. No, I, don't, I feel like it, it would come natural. It would come very naturally. So I was like, no, I don't see it. So anyway, like he would take it upon himself to like, um, he found out where I lived, right? Like the community, the name of the community that I lived in in Montgomery. And so he was like, What? I was like, Yeah. And so he was like, you know, I'm down there all the time because he was he's a truck driver or was a truck driver. And so he would have to like come into town most of the time and he would be like less than fifteen minutes away from where my parents live. So ultimately, that will be closer than me leaving my house and going to his house where he ultimately moved to because he's not from Montgomery. He's from like Tuskegee, Wall, you know, little stuff like that. So, yeah. So I'm just like, child, I get it, but nah. But, you know, it, it became easier for us to link up when we hadn't seen each other for a while because he would be on the road. Or, and well, he, of course, he would be on the road and I would be working and in school and all this other stuff. And so it became harder for us to have our friend time. I really am big on spending time with my friends. So I, I hope that people understand that this wasn't no old you over here trying to act like you ain't here for him, but you over here worried about spending time with him. Yeah, because he was my actual friend. Like, I really don't play by that. So anyway, you know, he just would, he would like take every six months to a year or so he would tell me how he felt about me and i'm just like lord i really would try to see it like i'm like he seems like a good dude but it's just something about him i just can't i can't do it the chemistry ain't there like i feel like it should be so easy anyway child um this woman has said it all girl what is wrong with you anyway um but yeah he's somebody who still lives for me but it's like he's kind of accepted that i don't want him and it hurts him but he just kind of watches from the outside looking in seeing um he's he's seen 
Like what? The dude in Huntsville. Then my most current. So he's seen two men over the course of the 20 years that we've been friends come in and out of my life or whatever. Because when I was done, no, three. Because I was with this dude who's from Pontiac, Michigan. That was another connection to the Huntsville show. I told y'all I had an ex who played football for Alabama State University who was from Pontiac, Michigan. Then my ex before that was the one that was uh, that is from Huntsville. And then my most recent ex. So, yeah. Um, it kind of hurts his feelings every time. Just like this other friend that I have, child. That's a whole nother situation. And I'm like, I get it, but... I don't see that for us. I see regular friendship. But we've always been there for one another. Like a classic example of us being there for one another is he, like I told y'all before, he he is slash was a truck driver. And at one particular time, he got laid off. Like something was going on with the company that he was working for. And so he had a son. His son at the time was like younger than 10. Like he was really young. So... At the time, this was the only child that I knew of. He gonna try to tell me he told me about his daughter. I was like, no, you did not. You told me you only mentioned this child. Anytime I talk to you, I say, hey, how are you? And I specifically say his son's nickname because that's what they call him. His son has his his name, his name as well. So it's like he's a junior. And so, you know, that's not what his nickname is, by the way. So I'm like... You never corrected me in saying, well, you know I have a daughter too, right? Because you never told me you had a daughter. Why would I sit up here and only address the son? You had a whole daughter as well. Like, child, it was a lot. So anyway, um, at this particular time, I only knew about the son. And so he was like, um, I feel, you know, he felt some type of way because he wasn't going to be able to do anything. He wanted to do a light little small party. Or at least, like, just feed him or whatever. Child, I was like, okay, so what you thinking about doing? So, he telling me a little stuff. I done politely crunked the car up. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm finna crank this car up. I crunked the car up. And uh, came into the city. Because at the time, I was still living with my parents. Okay, so some stuff was going on with my mama. It was some kind of random, mysterious situation, child. I was, it's like in my mind, I was like, oh, I'm about to move out and go do, like I was making good money. And I was like, yeah, I'm about to move out and go do this, that, and the other. And it's like, my mama got sick. It was like six months. I don't even, I don't even remember what it was no more. It was so random. She got sick and I was like, oh, no. So in my mind, I'm like, I'm the oldest. I'm going to just stay here. It ain't meant for me to move out yet. I'm just going to stay at the house tend to my mama's needs i know she's gonna have to go back and forth to doctor's visits whatever okay that's what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna go to work and come home and tend to her that's what i'm gonna do so anyway um he over here you know stressing over the little party and all this other stuff meanwhile i'm at the house like i'm on my way i'm about to be on your side i'm about to be on your what is it i'm on the side of your town whatever that song is that's on tiktok and thing so he looking at me like what you talking about i was like uh, I'm about to come get you so we can go to the store and get the birthday stuff. We're going to get a cake. We're going to get like whatever you think your son like. Toy. Like I bought some toys for his son. Bought the cake. His son likes, liked a particular type of cake. I bought the cake. I'm like, I don't care. Like I had money and you know, I wasn't balling or nothing, but I had money. And so I was like, okay, like who is we talking about? Um, he was like, he young, he wanted like some kind of little KFC. So I bought a bucket of KFC food. Like at the time, look, listen, don't judge me. But back then, I don't know if they doing it or started back doing it. But back then, one of the sides you could get was corn on the cob, right? And I used to always get corn on the cob. I used to have the biggest pieces of corn on the cob. It wasn't no little bitty little, it wasn't that. It was a big. Y'all understand how much I love corn, even though, I mean, corn is not an alkaline vegetable. Corn is delicious, though. And my daddy, he, you know, he, he, he does what he does, and corn comes from it, and that corn is good. Y'all don't understand. Okay, so anyway, so I'm like, okay, so what you want? He was like, child, I'm like, it don't matter. Come on now. So 
I done ordered the corn. I done ordered the chicken, the biscuits, all the other little sides and stuff he wanted. All the sides. Cool. Do what you do. So, bring the stuff to the house. His son was so happy. He, I, I told him to make him think it's from you. And he, he really, he didn't want to do it. He kind of made it seem like it came from the both of us. He was like, tell Miss, da 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 you know, thank you. And I'm like, boy, you ain't have to do that. So, you know, he's always been there for me. He's always been very, very sweet, very, very nice and all of that. And um, when my relationship was over with my ex, my most recent ex, he texted me out of nowhere when I was actually about to pull into a gas station. And I was working my last job where I was making peanuts and he was like, Hey, how you doing? And he calls me Blender. And so he playfully calls me Blender. And so, you know, I was like, hey, what's going on? You know, I call him by his whole government because I know he don't like that, but he do because it's coming from me. So anyway, um, that's how he usually can tell it's me, like for real, whether we're texting or whatever. So he was like, what's going on with you? How you doing? And I'm, you know, this is not really normal for us anymore. What we usually do is he reach out to me and say blender 5,000 times. We barely say, hey, bye, and that's it. This particular day, he was like, how you doing? I was like, I mean, I'm here. Like, what's up? And Because I'm thinking it's going to be the hey, bye conversation. Well, y'all, I'm not going to do the Freaky Friday um, leftovers that I was going to do. But anyway, um, <laughs> just to make sure I say that because I didn't realize that I was going to talk this much about my friend. So, with that situation, he was just like, well, what's going on with you? I was like, nothing. And so, like, he could tell by the way I was typing that something was wrong, so he called me. So then, got on the phone with me, he was like, what's wrong with you? I was like, what you mean? He was like, you don't seem right. You don't seem like yourself. I told you, everybody live for me. I'm, I try to be happy and, you know, a ray of light and, you know. I try to be rainbows and puppies for everybody and all of that stuff. But deep down on the inside, I'd be so depressed and tired in my spirit. It'd be so it'd be a lot going on sometimes. There are times that I am genuinely like that, but there are a lot of times that I'm not. Like lately I've been down in the dumps. But it's okay. But he was just like, I could tell something off was wrong. So I was like, nothing, you know. He was like, do you need anything? I was like, yeah, of course I do, but I'll be all right. Like I, like I always tell people, I'll figure it out. So he was like, what you got going on? I was like, well, I'm at the gas pump and I'm just going to put nothing pretty much in there. And he was like, how much do you need? Like how much to fill up the tank? And so I was like, why? He was like, because I'm going to send you the money. What's your cash app? I was like, you're not sending me anything. Like I, I cannot stand. I, I don't like taking money from people, even if you're my friends. Unless I can tell you I'm gonna pay it back because I'm borrowing it from you, I just can't do it. It do something to me. I, I feel some type of way. I feel terrible about it. Even if I really, really need it, I feel so terrible about it. So he was like, anyway, what's your cash up? So after I told him the amount, which at the time it was going to take like $30 to fill up my tank. <clears throat> he sent the money immediately and I thanked him, you know, because we had gotten off the phone because something he had to do something. So he got off the phone. So I texted him and I was like, I got the money and I used it for the gas. Thank you so very much. And he was like, you're welcome, honey. So um, he's always been there for me. And it's almost never anything about financial, just to make it plain. Because a lot of people, they feel like if you ain't there for them financially, then you ain't there for them. And I, that is definitely not the case. But with him, he is like literally always been there, always a listening ear. Even when I had terrible breakups, child, he has always been there. He has been very, very supportive. So I said all that to say this. So, um, his mom passed away and he was like, you know, she's been sick for quite some time. And I was like, I know, I remember you talking about it. You know, I knew she was sick, but I didn't know, you know, what exactly was going on. 
Um, she had been in like an assisted living facility and all that. Once that situation came about, I'm like, okay, so she really is sick to the point where nobody can, you know, provide care for her as far as her children, um, had to bring in other people because she's going to need around the clock care. So I'm like, okay. But for some reason, I just was thinking that it was going to turn around because the way he was talking about her in the most recent months. So I ain't say nothing about it, you know, just prayed about it. And, you know, every time I would talk to him, I'm like, how y'all doing? And he said, everybody fine. Like he didn't say nothing like anything seemed to have been deteriorating. So I was like, okay. So then he broke the news yesterday. So I reached out to him and I said, um, I'm, I'm very sorry for your loss. I know that this must be hard for y'all to deal with because, you know, like I said, he has siblings and, you know, he said, thank you, honey. And I said, how are you and um, how y'all holding up? He was like, we holding, um, you know, she's been sick for a while. I was like, yeah, you did tell me that. So, you know, he didn't really want to talk that much. So I just left it at that. I'm going to reach out a couple of more times throughout the week to, you know, see if they need anything. Um, I'm probably going to send them some money and, you know, see what, it, see what I can do, you know, cause I do, you know, I try to, I'm, I'm going to try to help when I can. I hate it when I was in a position where I barely had money to pay my bills and keep gas in my car. And I would want to help people who were suffering, um, in any type of way, whether they needed some groceries, they needed gas for their car, they might have needed diapers for their kids, and I couldn't provide it. I couldn't help them. They used to hurt me, but now I'm in a position where I can help. So um, I'm going to ask him if they need anything and to send some money to them so that, you know, at least he can have some money um, to do a couple of things. I'm not going to bake nothing. Now, if I had been living in Montgomery, even if the funeral is going to be out in Wall or in Tuskegee or anywhere in between Tuskegee and Montgomery, I would have definitely gone by the house and dropped off a cake. I would have made a cake. My mama is in no condition to make anything, so I can't ask her to do it on my behalf no more. Um... I would ask my brother, but I it, it need to be me. It need to be coming from me or my mama. So, so yeah, y'all. It's been everybody. That's why I've been saying like something going on. It's something. It's like a war on mamas, and I don't understand what's going on. Like everybody, mama is going all the way through. So I feel some type of way about it. Um. So just lift my friend and his siblings and you know their children up in prayer because she had quite a few grandbabies and all of that everybody lived for her so it's it's a lot um yeah y'all i i don't know i i wish that i i was there so that i could you know roll up way before the funeral happens but i'm here unfortunately so yeah I wasn't expecting this video to go like this. My bad, y'all. I meant to start off the video saying that, but um, it's like random stuff be popping off before I leave work, and then that's on at the forefront of my mind now versus what I initially had planned. So anyway, y'all, thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all so much, as usual. I'm going to go inside and hopefully get ready for some recap reviews. See y'all later. Bye.